Yeah. Yeah. It's your boy LA Styles. And we here. We here with episode 16 of the Postal Blue Podcast. What's going on? What's going on? Another week down. Uh, what is this? November 2nd. Uh, from what I hear, been a good Saturday for some, a bad Saturday for others, even worse Saturday for some stations. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, and just just another end of a week, slash start of a week. You know what I'm saying? What's going on over there, Coffee? Man, you know, it's been one of those weeks where you know, uh, post office been been down, been uh been swamped, but you know, just uh pushing, you know. Same thing, same thing. Trying to get all this political mail that we're drowning in out to each and every person. So make sure y'all go vote on November 5th. And uh, maybe by November 15th, we won't have any more political mail. Of course, is y'all station doing Sunday delivery? Unfortunately, no. I, I, I don't think our poon is very proactive. They are very reactive. They wait to a problem comes a issue and then try to address it and then by that time they just continue to you know soil their self so no i don't think my poem will ever be able to come up with a plan and push it forward so that's what we that's what we are right now okay i asked because i heard some districts outside of our district are doing uh sunday delivery so who got mail on the floor correct so just to say you know how across the board it's the post office this the post office that meaning things should be uniform right it was built from the military off the backs of the grounds of the military supposed to be uniform if one district say right. hey man we can't do that because the post office is on the budget then another district say nah man we doing that because we getting mail off the floor there's a discrepancy somewhere <laughs> you know what I'm saying? somebody right. somebody information ain't ain't all the way information in, you know what i'm saying some don't the math ain't right. math if y'all both under the same situation you know what i'm saying exactly. so it, that type of stuff just just make you think you know what i'm saying how people be moving uh and putting that out there that sunday delivery has always been an option it's always been an option we've done it we have doing it when i came in we've done it when i was a regular you know what i'm saying deliver right. mail on sunday so if there was something in the contract that allowed that to happen I'm under the assumption that that's still in the contract since how the, the contract that was in just ended and we don't have a new contract. So it's still got to be in there. Then if, on, if it's anything in particular that allow that got to still be in effect. Why, why is no happening? Absolutely. We got stuff on the floor that needs to get, to get done, especially if we're talking about political season and, and stations possibly, possibly have political mail on the floor. Why Sunday not available to get that, to get that done. You know what I'm saying? So, Right. Just asking, you know what I'm saying, because I had heard that. But outside of that, man, to, to me, it was it was a, it was a decent week. Um, good weather all week for me. Yeah, to the individual. There some people was yeah. complaining it was cold earlier this week. Um, I ain't gonna say cold, maybe cool, maybe a little bit too cool for others. I ain't gonna say cold because when I think cold, I'm thinking at the tens, twenties, maybe around even thirty. When it's around 50, to me, that's not cold, but it is on the cooler side, especially if the wind is blowing a lot. You know what I'm saying? But to each his own, you know what I'm saying? Because everybody body bit different. Correct. But it was it was to me, it was it was cooler. Um, and then I don't know what happened. Coffee, coffee got disconnected again, y'all. It was cooler and then it warmed up. So it was pretty decent where, where we were in uh Wisconsin. Um went from the mid 50s, early to mid 50s to back to the 60s to close to 70 so that's more right so outside of that um post office been post officing still been running still been moving like we do hold on let me get your coffee back man appreciate that i apologize guys um but yeah the post office been we've just been moving chucking jiving you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> Uh, again, I mean, out of a week, I haven't seen, I haven't heard of a lot of various, whether it's harassments, bullying tactics, you know what I'm saying? Things like that. That's not to say that it happened, but I haven't heard a lot of it. So 
it's been it should have been a pretty decent week at least. Go ahead, Carl. No, I, I take it back. I forgot about it. I'm glad you said that. It was an incident. It was an incident on Friday, right? I believe we have to understand for us to be a successful company, we must treat each and every one with respect. If you're on the overtime mm-hmm. list, I understand if it's overtime available, they would like you to take it. But the overtime list is the voluntary list. So if somebody give you Friday, is their weekend off? I, let me get, first let me start here. You should always ask a person, do they plan to come in on their schedule? Ask. Talking to an adult like he's a kid or she's a kid will get you nowhere. It's probably going to get you 18 to 15 routes down at your station because you believe you can talk to adults like kids. It's never going to work. Ever. No matter who you are. The best way to do anything is treat each and every adult with the respect that they should have and the dignity that you should give them. You shouldn't believe because you have a title that somebody you're going to say, oh, are you coming in today, L.A.? L.A. say, no, I got plans. Oh, that wasn't a question. Okay. Well, when I walk in here tomorrow, <laughs> I guess you ain't got your answer to your question. It's all about dignity and respect. And you would think we'll get better at this. But we'll continue to get worse. We have supervisors who are very disrespectful. We have managers who will, oh, I didn't tell them to say that, but you didn't do anything about it. Being quiet if you're a manager, when a supervisor disrespects a carrier, clerk, or anybody else, you are complicit by your silence. Must do better. But now I'm off my soapbox. But that's the only real harassment of this week. Okay. Uh, well, on the short note, Fee had a little bit of experience that she just told us about. You know what I'm saying? Oh, true, true, true. Shout out Fee. Yeah. Shout out Watkins. You know what I'm saying? We're we going to be talking crazy to them uh, coming <laughs> soon. You know what I'm saying? Um, so Fee and them uh, in Ohio, today, they DPS came in after 2 p.m., right? People got to go ahead to do 12 on their own route. But again, it's already two. Now, fee, fee them start time is 7.15, right? Um, and I guess the mail came back tonight. And they management team feel some type of way. Probably really late. They closer, feel some type of way that they got mail back. Um, and I'm not sure what exactly was said or not said. I'm assuming he wasn't disrespectful, per se, as far as language goes. I'm assuming. We probably had a temper or attitude that came off a certain way about, you know what I'm saying? But just asking, you know, somebody got attitude when you bring back me on the head and they, they start asking you <laughs> about why this why bill, <laughs> why this bill, and then they get to like pacing back and forth and they not understand it. Like, the, it's, it's here, man. Like, I don't know. <laughs> probably one of those things, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, I don't picture they, they closer being that type of individual. Not to say that I know him per se. You know what I'm saying? But I've never heard that that type of dirt on his on his name in particular. Um, it's in Ohio. But what do you say about that, man? Look, you start you start at 7.15. <laughs> Your DPS, right now, from my understanding, they went out, bust down packages, and they pause. came back. Well, you know what I'm saying? Or not pause, you know what I'm saying? Or, or not. Then, see you know what I'm saying? Depends on how you want to look at uh, it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Heterosexual. But they uh no they did they did that from what she said in general in general they made it got different times for different people like nine thirty to ten you know what I'm saying with packages then they were sitting in the office management now they sitting in the office sat in the office to like two o'clock DPS get there after two they start at seven fifteen y'all got to keep that in mind. DPS get there at two. So you really only got to 7.15. So you got about five hours, a little bit. Five and five, five and fifteen. You know what I'm saying? Um, DPS get there at two. She said she got she had five trays, five full trays, she said. All political. Because they, they must have been running it all morning, right? To get as much as they could. Five full trays. And if you know, most trays average about 473, 75 pieces. I want to say that. 
the ruler would say in measure in management measurements would say quote unquote around 473 pieces of mail in one tray so if somebody got five full trays then we're talking about give or take 2500 pieces of mail which which is not light right because if you take it into a uh, average split size we're talking about maybe it's probably 10, gonna double if you got like 16 17 18 splits then you probably may be talking about 10 inches of mail per per split not counting the flats just just mail so if your if your your boo at home your man at home go look at a size 10 11 12 shoe that's that's about how much a split is and then you but if you got five around five trays give or take some because everybody route is different you know what i'm saying also with that it probably is going to be more around a six seven hundred per tray just because political mail is so thin it's thinner than your normal uh letter mail which is what we call dps so it's going to be maybe more than on their ruler their ruler is say 473 yeah, more yeah that's around why I, say, that's why I say give or take because i don't i don't know what's in the dps you know what i'm saying right. she says fool i know it's political in there they don't come real they like real thin two two three centimeter type thing they normally like a as a centimeter if that you know what i'm saying as an advertising card i was said give or take give or take Going by they standards. I'm go, Sometimes you use they standards against them. Going by right. they standards, give or take around five hundred pieces. Give or take a tray. Right. But just to say, again, that's that's not a small split though. You know what I'm saying? No, that's not a small no split. standard. Even on the average of ten inches, that's that's not a small split, man. You trying to hold? You trying to hold like a? a that's like a baby. You know what I'm saying? That's like a a newborn. That's how you inches, hold a DPS you know in your hand. <laughs> So think so about hold, trying to hold 12 inches of that. I think pause. this particular box, let me see. This particular box is you probably y'all probably can't get the gist, you know what I'm saying? This particular box is, is 10 inches. I'm six one, you know what I'm saying? Two inches shorter, shorter than the foot. That's average. Right. You know what I'm saying? Now again, depending on how a route is, how her splits are, some splits longer than others. She could have some splits that with that's bigger than others. She could have a 12 inch, 13 inch split. You know what I'm saying? If she got a, a real long, like a 30 minute block or something. So with packages, with flats, and more uh political mail on in that. So so that's just to say, on top of that, rubber bands can't hold everything. Post office gotta understand that. Not saying that you gotta take that into account of everything, just have that and, and you gotta let's lock that in. Rubber bands, especially when it comes to political mail or any mail that's like cars, advertising cars, as you pull that out the rubber band, it starts to it. cut the rubber band. Then you just got a lot of loose mail. You could try to put another rubber band on it and it might hold you. You know what I'm saying? Over till you get back to your vehicle. Or hopefully when you get through half of the block, then the mail get a lot smaller. And then if it if it snaps or, or cuts or rips, then, you know what I'm saying, it's just more manageable. But it's not a good situation either way especially at this time where it's fall going into the winter winds start picking up you got a bundle of mail with no rubber band on it man listen if my mail comes out of my hand it's on the ground i'm going home it's on the ground i'm going home chief that's you that, know what? right there my day jacked up right there it's over I, my head space I can't put it is, back together on the street i can't put it back together on the street then you got to talk about all the paper cuts you're going to get from the political mail as well now. That's going to happen to you, even though you're trying not to get paper cuts, but it's definitely going to happen. It'd be like so. That. I'm not telling. I'm not saying it. These are not excuses. These are things that happen every split of every day when you have card mail like that. It's sharp as hell, and you got to do the best you can. But when you have so much dps along with you getting in at one two three o'clock in the afternoon every carrier wants to deliver every piece of mail i know somebody out there gonna lie to you and tell you carriers the all carry no every carrier wants to go out there and deliver every piece of mail to my customers i know everything that you order everything every piece of mail that come to your house is very important to you it's very important to the carrier as well, right? 
I know this notion because we won't jump over uh, a car that's on fire. We won't we won't hold a dog off to deliver your mail. You think we're late. If you're on a mountain route where it's, where it's a motorized route where you're in a car, y'all feel like we should just get out because you left your garbage cans there. But why you don't leave your garbage can in, in your driveway? Because you don't want to get out when you get ready to come home. We lazy. I just need I just need the customers to understand there's a lot of challenges that happen that it's hard to get, you know, get a handle on it sometimes. You're dealing we're dealing with a lot. Just because we don't show it doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Facts. So I just thought that was funny. You know what I'm saying? I didn't mean to get into anything uh technical. I just thought it was funny that you know what I'm saying? The DPS came at two. And some mail came back at 6, 630, 7.30, 7.15. Down there, they don't get the option to take no lunches. So they it's really 7.45, right? And whatever their MOU is or whatever the case is, they don't got that option to take a no lunch. <clears throat> again, so y'all, once again, how different some districts can be from, from district to district. I just thought that was funny that they got mad, right? And then I was talking to... Who was I talking to? Was that you or was that Mike earlier? Was that maybe, maybe it was Mike. Um, and I was saying how truck drivers have three shifts. Right. Material handlers, material slash mail handlers, mail handlers, spot my apologies, have three shifts. From my understanding, because they work in distribution, clerks in True. distribution have three shifts, right? True. Not to say that they don't have overtime, but it, unless they short, they probably don't get forced overtime like that. Like maybe they have to have like half a shift gone or something like that because you got a whole nother shift coming in to pick up whatever slack you have. So I might not, you know what I'm saying? I probably don't have to force you because I got people coming in when you clock out. Right. Correct. What I don't like is the fact, and again, this is not me saying that, the, that these particular crafts did anything or anything was their particular fault. Right. I'm just giving an example. There's something could be messed up on a truck driver's end and be delayed. Something could be messed up on the mail handler's end, be delayed, as far as mail, packages, whatever. On the clerk's end, downtown distribution, machines could break down. People could not show up at work in large quantities, whatever the case is. Y'all want them to, to overrun the machine for long periods of time to cause mail delay. But a lot of y'all seem to still be going home at eight. Just to say, mm. it's cool to put the mail at my doorstep whenever you feel like it so I can get forced because there is no second shift or third shift for carriers. This is why Correct. we can get forced because we don't have backup. To me, that ain't that ain't cool. That ain't cool. We man. continue. You know what I'm saying? It's not and then cool. try to say, not. you mad that I brung back mail, but you not mad at, at the mail being brung in here like eight hours late? You know what I'm saying? When the mail supposed to get here? Five o'clock this morning? Six o'clock this morning? It came at 7 p.m. in the afternoon? They're never mad at that the supply chain breaks down in a hundred different other ways. They're never, they're never going to say anything to the people who are supposed to run the machines. They're never going to say nothing to the truck driver. They're never going to say something to the material handling. Never going to say anything at all. It's always going to be put on, put on us to guess what? Hey man, I know they messed. Hey, I they won't tell them they messed up. They're never gonna tell them they messed up. And somebody might say, Why do you know they won't tell them they messed up? Because if you keep telling somebody they messed up, they'll start changing something. We're always getting bad product. We are their customer. So at some point, y'all gotta say, look, if we if we get if we don't have enough people, hey, run this. Just run this. I made the argument, I think today, I think I was talking to Mike, I made the argument, I mean, the best way to get the political mail out of here is to hold back the letter mail and run just straight political DPS. Don't even run any letter mail. Run straight DPS, all all the DPS you can run a political mail, send it out, and that be your DPS that day. Because we're drowning in, in political mail. But when we get got mail, every day is late. In my poem, 
somebody's getting mail late every day. And guess what? The demand doesn't change on my time. They still believe, oh, you should be able to get done quicker. How? It didn't get to me quick. They didn't run the mail quick. So why why am I held to a higher standard than my 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 counterparts? I'm not I'm not advocating for anybody to get in trouble. I am advocating for the for the mail to get to me in a timely manner so I can get it out to my customer in a timely manner. Or again, just I'm the, the last the, the equality. Treat me like like the people downtown. If you ain't saying nothing to them, don't say nothing to me, man. I'm, I'm not I'm not I'm not the cleaner. Both ways. I'm not the cleaner. You know what I'm saying? Y'all try to treat us like we cleaners. No matter what happens, y'all got to fix everybody before you situation. The mail is here now. So we just got to get it done. So if I got to force you 15 hours today, I got to get it done. That ain't happening, sir. I got 12. And no, I don't even got that no more. <laughs> just because you're talking to me crazy. And I feel oh, like no. you disrespecting me. Yeah, you know how no. I feel. You ain't gonna force. I volunteer for a lot of stuff, but I'm never gonna be. I'm not gonna be forced. That uh, that just ain't gonna happen. I, I think volunteer the word for time. Force. The word force is such a disrespectful word and thought process to say to another grown adult. I don't even understand how adults are like. I mean, if you say you're gonna force me, I'm gonna go home that day. I ain't got nothing else to do, but I'm going home. I'm not a child. You can't force me to go to school. I'm not a dog that you can force into a into a cage. I'm not a, I'm not a broom or a mop that you can force into a closet. That just don't happen. I don't know why they have been, been changed that with just like I'm uh I got a mandatory you two hours. You know what I'm saying? I got a it, it's a, it, it's it, it, it's multiple better terms than force. You know what I'm saying? You I'm gonna say, tell you why. Hey, Lynn, hey, hey, L, everybody, all the nine vials, PTS Max. You know what I'm saying? I got a man. I got a mandatory all the nine vials for for they two hours. Okay. Let me tell you. I why, already man. expect my two hours come, so I never have a problem with it anyway. But they never come to me and say, "Lynn, you being forced two hours." They say, hey, "Lynn, you want time?" I just look at the side of the clip. All all your people, Max. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, cool. Let me get these. Let me get these three. Let me get these four. That's me volunteering over my two. Because I know once I take two, this for anybody that don't know, you know what I'm saying? You can volunteer for more than two. You know what I'm saying? Now, that's rare because most nine vials don't want overtime. That's why they nine vials, right? That's that's not how my right. head works, right? And my head don't work in in um, in not calculating the, the most money possible. I calculate the most money possible. So why would I take two when that's overtime and, and stop at the penalty? Right. Right. If I'm gonna get that far, cross the finish line. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. If you take one, don't stop looking at the finish line and then stop. You know what I'm saying? Take the third at least. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. Or if you're going over on your own, then I see why you're not taking more than a two. Or maybe you think the two gonna take you a little bit more, whatever the case is. But I never stop at two. By the time they come to me, you know what I'm saying? And they say we got this, and I look at the what you call it. I say first thing I say is, hey, how much? How much y'all, y'all need? Man, we can do three, four. Cool. I, I just take it after that because once I'm once I'm getting mandatory for my two, I can volunteer to take more because I'm already I'm already quote unquote being forced. Correct. I, you could take more. You know what I'm saying? It's still a grievance no matter what on, on them, but they're not gonna turn it down if they need the help. The grievance come with them you to do more mail anyway. So the reason why they haven't changed changed that that term is because carriers don't feel like they should be respected. They just don't feel like I should have to respect you enough to ask you. The union don't feel like that they, they respect us enough to ch make them change that word, that mindset. The post office don't respect us enough to change that mindset. So if you want to know why they say force you, because carriers allow them to say it to them. The union allow them to say it to carriers. That's why. You know why the word unalive is going around and has became the new word to say other than a person did, a person died. 
because people was like, you know, we don't really like how how that sound doesn't it doesn't really resonate, you know. So we're gonna say unalive. Not everybody say, oh, somebody got unalived. It's all about the respect that a person has for their their listening person or the person that they're dealing with. We don't respect ourselves enough to say, hey, you ain't going to talk to me like that. Somebody's going to hear me say this and say, oh, oh, I don't, it, it really doesn't bother me. You're the person I'm talking to. You are the very person I'm talking to and the reason why we get 1.3. That's why that, that's why that's on the table. 1.3 is on the table because, hey, I don't respect what you have done through the pandemic. I don't respect what you do every day. I don't respect the men and the women who have died working at the post office. Those are the people, those are the individuals I'm talking to. The people who wants to get behind, find closed doors and be like, oh, man, I don't even, I don't even know what y'all crying about. 1.3, that's more than I had yesterday. <laughs> wow. Well, how about you go work at anywhere else? Because I know job I do every day, I deserve more than 1.3. Those are the same and people, people say, oh, why do y'all do host a pod, uh, post a podcast? Those are the people who throw rocks from the cheap seats. Then they get mad when you call them out. These individuals are at stations where they're putting discipline on their head every day for nothing. Stuff that they could be easily in the contract. All they care about is the grievance that comes with monetary value. That's the only ones they care about. They don't care about somebody bringing them in the office for anything. Oh, you, you ran over one click, so we got to give you a letter on it. Well, maybe they shouldn't have ran over one click. Well, tell me how I'm supposed to make the bus move out of my way. Do I supposed to run the old lady over in traffic because I'm one click over? That's the same person who will stand in the station and let a supervisor talk to you crazy. You ask them to write a statement, they won't write anything. Those are the people that's a problem in our group. And as long as we won't say they're a problem, they're going to continue to be a problem. Those are the same people who who, who will call out uh, other people and say, oh, I, I don't understand. He he ain't really for us. He for somebody else. Let me let me let me be very clear. Let me be very candid. I go by the handle of Black Knight. My name, my real government name is Demetrius. Ricardo Elwood Coffee Senior. I would not stand or be on a podcast with somebody I believe is not fighting for the same thing I am. So when you take a shot at Leonard Anderson, aka LA, you're taking a shot at me. Now Leonard is a bit more reserved and he he's not gonna go on tirade because he really don't care. I do. Yeah, really when you when care. you come in my integrity, I feel a type of way. LA, since they since they want to they want to talk about it in the blogs, I'll bring it here. Anybody who feels a certain way is a comment section on the YouTube page. All you have to do is say, I would like to come on the show and give my reason why I feel this way. Leave your email address. We will submit, we will go through, allow you, we'll send you when we're going to record, and we'll let you come on and say your and say your two bit. So whatever you want to say. Right, we'll allow you to say that, but to say somebody else, LA went on the desk because he felt like he could change things from another position. But I don't know how you listen to any other poster podcast episodes, and you would say out of your mouth, I don't believe he has the carrier's best best intentions. I don't know how you hadn't talked to anybody. I, nobody called me. Nobody texted me. Mm, I believe one, one of the things that was said is if I'm part of management, why would I care? Which well, I don't understand. because well, well, I answer that question. When have I officially been part of management? I get, I get the 204B aspect. You're not a part of management as a 204B. I've been on the desk long terms, long forms, acting supervisor, Acting manager when I wasn't supposed to be, and that's unofficial. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Technically, but I've never been under no type of supervisor contract or no manager contract. I'm I'm a unit bargaining member, no matter what. Only time yeah. I'm not a fish in that status is if I have a 1723 that puts me on the detail as an acting supervisor. 
at that point, I have I have a um, supervisor advisory status, right? So at that point, I'm not a unit bargaining member when I have a 1723. Outside of me having 1723, I'm back in my official status of a unit bargaining member. Now, when I do have a 1723, I'm still under the NALC contract because I'm still a carrier. I haven't applied for EAS title. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I don't, I don't, when I'm on 1722, I actually get rep, supposed to get represented by a NAPS representative if I get paperwork. I've never had paperwork put on me when I've been a supervisor status. And outside of being a carrier, I've only had paperwork put on me for, I think I went to office two times, maybe three times for attendance reviews. But outside of can that, you, have, you, have you ever put paperwork on a carrier? In my two years, no. I've never put paperwork on anybody. Have, have you ever been asked to put I've also, paperwork on a carrier? I, have I been asked to? Yeah. I've been instructed to. Correct. And I didn't. ever put paperwork on a carrier? Say it again? So I, I, no, I, I just want the audience to know for when somebody says he, how could he, why, why should he care because he's supposed to be on management? The clear answer to that is management is supposed to care about how all of us feel. Management is supposed to care that you make making a living wage. Management is supposed to care that they're treating you right. Management is supposed to care that they're not harassing you. Management is supposed to care about you. The problem is that we have these two entities that has us into an uproar. And one of the two entities I am talking about is the, is the union and the post office. Because mm, I, 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 I give you an example right quick, Coffee. And then let, let, let you keep going, right? A carrier got in a car accident. All right. right. Uh, not her fault. At the same time, not her fault. Somebody merged in, in her way. You know what I'm saying? So whatever. Had to call the police. She hit me up. Cool. On my way. Sent out a message to everybody. Hey, I'm out the station. Accident. I'll be back. Be safe. I head out. Get out there. Waiting on the police. She can't leave the scene of accident, whatever. Time is ticking. Police, at this point in time, it's been like almost 50 minutes, right? Correct. She say, I'm finna be messed up because it's my, I don't think it was her daughter. It was either her daughter or her niece's birthday, right? And she was actually on her way back to the job because she was done. She had to head out to Sam's Club to get a cake for the birthday. Now, all that's messed up. I said, don't worry about it. What's the name? What's the location? I I go back to the station. I send out another message. I get in the car, go drive to Sam's Club to go pick up the cake for my carrier so that people wouldn't go without their they situation. I'll be back. Then came back to the accident. Police still weren't there, though. But, you know what I'm saying? But I go out of my way for, for my people. You know what I'm saying? No, I've never put paperwork on the carrier. And but I will I will talk to them or address them about situations. Hey, we got to do better on this front. If it's something like this, like possibly that they that they are at fault. At. Hey, listen, we got to watch this. The stationary, this, that, the overage. You know what I'm saying? We got to do the best we could. If something come up, whatever the case, because I know how it is. Hit me up. Let me know what's going on. Then I'll give you further instructions on how we going to work that situation out so we don't end up in that same situation at least work it in a different way, right? Even if I got to have you come back to the station, I'd rather you catch the stationary time at the station than on the street in, in any particular situation. I can speak to that, right? To try to at least put myself in the, in the, in the best situation to defend people when, it, when they come to my people. I go talk to them or just get you information. Hey, look, you see this report? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is this, this is this, this is this, this what this happened, this was happened that this this is real time in the because a lot of carriers don't understand the new a lot of the new systems. They can see everything. They, they can right. see a lot. Hey, let me show you this. You know what I'm saying? Before you go into the office with somebody and might perjure yourself or whatever. Listen, they can see this right here. Right? So whatever you're doing right here in these moments, you might need to watch this. Because if this keeps up, then you're gonna have to talk to somebody in the office. And that's on you. You know what I'm saying? But at least have the information. People start moving differently sometimes. And again, that's not to say that they was doing anything wrong. That's why I didn't I didn't ask that, that question. Just giving you the information. If something now, again, I always end up with if something going on, hit me up. 
or if I'm not on the desk, hit management up. Always put the ball back in management court and let them give you an instruction on what they on what they want to do. That way you're cool. not responsible for what's going on. They are. Absolutely. But I want to so just, I just, I just go ahead, Golf. No, I just want to address the, the you know the elephant in the room, you know. Um and like I I think I don't said this before. We want our platform to be where if you have a question, the, our ears are open. If you have a critique, our ears are open. If you feel like we didn't represent um, <laughs> some information correctly, we want, hey, come, hey, say, hey, jump in there, send us a message, send your email address, because uh, we don't want, you know, and we'll send, we'll send you a, the day we, we, we record, or we'll send you uh where you can get on it, and then we'll let you we'll let you get your spill off. And if you still feel that way afterwards, I mean, you have the right to feel how you want to feel. Mm -hmm. That's just true. But to be out here inserting uh, things that's not true, I mean, and somebody offering you a place where you can speak your mind, you'll be crazy not to. And again, hey, my, see how it's called? It's dirt. You, putting dirt, yeah, on somebody putting dirt on people's name, it. man. That's what we call it. Know what you're talking about if you're gonna do it, unless you're just playing, then you then be playing. You know what I'm saying? You can play put dirt on people's name. Some people, y'all seem like y'all coming off serious. And again, <laughs> if you don't know us, go back into the episodes. We tend to put a little bit of ourselves and situations and experiences in the episodes where we're talking about stuff. I'm not gonna keep repeating my history. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's not <laughs> right. gonna happen on on. I'm he looking to go forward, not backwards, right? Okay. I've been a part of the desk. I've been a part of the desk. I'm a carrier first and foremost, right? I have ties with a lot of carriers, PTF, CCAs, got my phone numbers, call. I, <clears throat> I got people right now on Twitter from other districts. On Twitter, in my DMs, asking me or telling me that they being harassed, how should they move? And I just remembered the other day. Shout out to, to you. Because one the one that's recent that they kind of know. Um, I just remember that Twitter even have DM, so I wasn't over there. And when I when I went over there a couple of days ago, I seen the mess. I'm like, oh, I forgot. So people that ain't been able to reach me directly been trying to reach me on Twitter in the DMs, and I didn't know. Right. So now I know that's in my head. Right. So we're gonna finagle that. The LA Styles, the underscore LA Styles on, on Twitter, or now commonly known as X or currently known as X, formerly known as Twitter. You can hit me in the DMs over there if you got situations, right? Um, when we get the Discord, again, I'm paying to get the Discord done, already paid. It's being built uh, as we speak. So a lot of the things going to be on Discord, right? We have live conversations on Discord. You can get information in live time. The more we build up people over there, no matter what time you get on, you will have somebody to talk to about something, right? Correct. Hopefully we get this na this nationwide. You know what I'm saying? As many as we can, at least. So anytime anybody got a problem to get on, you ain't got to worry about missing Leonard or missing coffee, and they ain't responding in a day or two or whatever the case. Because you have multiple people on there. Hopefully thousands of people on there that might have the same information we got because we done gave it to some people. And now that we can start helping each other like that, I think we need a live system, which is why I'm, I'm building the Discord. Right. Along with that, just giving y'all some further updates on some situations. You know what I'm saying? Me and Coffee are going to be live streaming from time to time. Coffee is a big Call of Duty person. Uh, I'm somewhat yes. of a Call of Duty person. I'm kind of, I'm kind of coming out of my Call of Duty phase, but I will go back. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that's going to be cracking. We're going to be live streaming on here, um, and y'all going to be able to connect with us either on here if we live stream through here or on the Discord. We're going to try to meet up. We're going to get a a, a, a clan on the uh, on Call of Duty USPS. You know what I'm saying? Put that in your clan yes, tag, sir. USPS. We're going to try to do what we can do out here in these, these USPS streets. Let, let Call of Duty yes, know sir. we here in force. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of former military people. That's, I know y'all got some guns. I know y'all got some hands. You know what I'm saying? For real. So we got to put some work in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Custodians, yes. carriers, clerks, material handlers, mail handlers, truck drivers. We're going to be out here. You know what I'm saying? And for everyone real. is welcome. Again, Postal Blue, just to clarify, is for the post office. Let's let's clarify. Thank you. It's not a carrier podcast. 
is just the the main people here are carriers Correct. right so that's just how it, it turns out to be but it's not called postal blue for carriers or carrier blue <laughs> it's postal blue <laughs> i even welcome supervisors and managers if they welcome you know what i'm saying if if they yeah, welcome, but that's 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 on them you know what i'm saying I mean, same thing when it comes to the discord we make that everyone is welcome just don't be disrespectful that's all, all right that's all we ask welcome everybody you can have show. great conversations and great debates like coffee would say you know what i'm saying just as long as we had that respect that let's keep that because i hate to ban somebody i will have to ban from discord or youtube if we get to the disrespectful part correct and, and when you come on the show if you come on the show that's managers that's anybody who feels like we're not representing that's uh that's the president of the union you know i you know i got a lot of words for him but i'm i'm never going to disrespect him as a man that's what i won't do i got i got I'm frustrated but i'm not disrespectful to a person um same thing as if a manager got on here i wouldn't be disrespectful for him i will be very uh very direct to my point i won't beat around the bush and and ask questions and, and push back but I will allow them the same, you know what I'm saying, the same way to come at me or LA or uh or or Watkins or uh, we will allow you to speak and get your point across. We won't be interrupting and trying to talk over you. I'm gonna let you get your point out. I I, I mean, because I believe communication is the only clear way that you can ever move forward. So our our platform is for anybody that's in the post office that's looking for help with something we want to be able to give you that help and we want to be able to move the conversation forward we want to leave the post office in a better way than we found it and we want to be able to get everybody the information that they need at the time they need it and when we need information when we're doing shows we if you in that, in that discord and we might not know about something and we feel like oh that's a truck driver We'll 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 message you to get more details that we need, you know, for that show. We all about trying to research research the topic so we can have more, you know, more direct knowledge. And when you have knowledge, you have power, and when you have power, you have change. So that's really what our whole postal blue podcast movement is about. It's changing, you know, what I'm saying I call them informed people who's not informed on what they're talking about. Well, okay, two quick things. I, I just thought about something, right? Get this out right quick. You know what I'm saying? This is just this was a general public slash just a a day to day show right here. You know what I'm saying? We for this episode, this is what we're trying to get to. Again, a lot of the previous episodes was about particular things to give y'all particular information moving forward, so you can always find those back there, right? So this is. Almost the format that's going to be going forward, but we still got a, a couple more bricks to lay for a specific type of episodes. And we always get or always have specific episodes to give you information that uh, that whole episode will be about that information. Right. Two things. Right. Earlier, when I was talking about the 1723, I want to make something clear. Right. If I don't have a 1723. I'm a unit bargaining member and can participate in all union activities this is on the nalc website i don't plan on further talking about this going forward right and the person know who you are right if i have a 1723 i am in supervisory status and anytime i have a 1723 i should not and this is for people who don't know or 204bs who don't know if you have a 1723 you cannot participate in union activities right that includes Correct. going to a union meeting right technically technically now i think there is a window in there where you can go doing certain parts of the union event or the union meeting you can't participate in certain things probably like that's early on when they start talking about the positions and things like that but if it's something else that's in the contract that pertains to you which is normally towards the end you're supposed to be able to participate in that in those things, but you can't go in there and just be in there for the whole thing and get all the information, stuff like that. Now, as it is on NALC. Now, I didn't deep dive into that 
Y'all can go check that out, especially if you're on the desk, right? But if you have a 1723, I've never been at a union meeting with a 1723 because I've been at advisory status. Now, when I don't have a 1723, right, I can be at the union meetings, even if I'm participating on the desk. So if I'm just covering the desk this morning and the union meeting is tonight, I can be at that union meeting tonight without a 1723. Why? Because I'm a unit bargaining member. Now, I'm going to tell you this. Anytime I do have a 1723, not only does it go in the tax, not only does it go to the tax uh, um, head person, which is for us, is in Chicago. It also goes downtown to headquarters. It gets printed, and I got to sign it. And guess who gets a copy of that? The union. They send it to them. So anytime before I even get to a union me meeting, you would know if I was on 1723. So if you don't have a 1723 for me, I don't even see technically why you would come up to me asking me, have I been participating on the desk? It don't make sense. Now, I'm going to say this. Shout out to Travis, because this is ain't none of this for Travis. Travis, you cool people. Travis, you cool people. Real cool. And I, I got to go on part saying Travis. that. This I love Travis. Travis. No right? bullets for you, Travis. I, I, got no I, smoke I've with never you. had an issue. With Travis, I've never I've never heard anything bad when it comes to Travis. As far nah, as his Travis union, dude, bro. whatever the case is, you know what I'm saying? I've never had any personal dealings as far as like being having to be represented by him or meet with him or anything like that. So I don't I don't know. But I've never heard anything bad about Travis, right? Me, so cool. Can I say this about that's, Travis? That's not for you. you take off. I, I want to clarify. Go go ahead, call. One thing I can say about Travis in my dealings, I have had a a situation that he was put in that kind of run away, but I knew it wasn't Travis. One thing I can say about Travis, he is who he is. He's very quiet. He, he, you know what I'm saying? He knows it. He knows when he has to move, when he has to speak. Um, but Travis is a straight up dude, man. I, I, I ain't got nothing but love, admiration for Travis, but it was a one time. And I think there was a second time that, well, that a situation with you when people put him in, in, in a bad position. And I would just say to Travis, you know, be mindful when somebody trying to use your great name to, you know, to have you to do things that's un-Travis and un-union wise. But for me, Travis always been good. Uh, uh, Travis always on did, did right by me for the most part other than the one situation. But Travis always been a good dude. I never heard. I have never heard anybody say nothing about Travis. Hell, mm. if you hear, ever. Yeah, the, but, the first time I actually had, talked with him, right, I was on the desk. Last, I don't know if that was last year, early this year. I can't remember. But I was on the desk. He came to the station. I don't remember what for. He went around to everybody. He was doing this thing or whatever the case is. Um, Which me, as a person on the desk, I don't, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Come in, do your thing, whatever the case is. Cool. I didn't know what he was there for. Now, people who want to be an a ho and what you there for? You on union time? You got your, you got your <laughs> school hall pass? You know what I'm saying? Doing the, right, you know who right, type right. of manager? You know what I'm saying? Hey man, whatever. You know what I'm saying? He came up to me and said, "Hey, Leonard, hey man, I just went around, I talked to everybody, man. Everybody said, man, they love you, man. You was a cool guy, so so." I said, "Well, man, I tried to be." You know what I'm saying? My first conversation, a one on one interaction with with Travis. You know what I'm saying? So I I know. Or would it take that he know to a degree my character because he talked to people that I work on the floor with, and he had never cut. He never probably came across Leonard did something. Leonard did. Something. I fixed too much stuff to do something funny. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I just wanted to clarify that that wasn't for Travis. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? That was for somebody else, right? And that same somebody else that came and asked me for information didn't take that information to Travis. So then Travis had to come ask me information that the old boy just asked me. So I'm like. In my head, I'm going to get irritated because if I'm coffee, why is people keep asking me the same thing? You know what I'm saying? Correct. In the same same meeting. But people keep coming up to me. I'm doing, ain't, ain't y'all together? You know what I'm saying? Like, what's going, what's going on here? But Travis, now again, that, that's not the Travis. Travis asked me like two questions, so on, so, so on, so. But I was like, cool. Go on. The other person trying to ask five, six questions, like it's interrogation or whatever the case is. I'm trying to listen to what what's saying. I've been here since the beginning. You know what I'm saying again, also with that, if somebody at there is at the meeting since the beginning, 
whatever you need to know, why don't you go ask the dean? Please. Because I, I, I was there I for like 15, that. 20 minutes before, and we all was there. Travis, Rob, oh boy. Did nobody say nothing to me? Is everybody walking around, including him, back there by me? Didn't ask me anything. Then we enter the meeting. People are talking, and you trying to have a side conversation while people are talking. Now, I get somebody say something like whisper something like, "Hey, coffee." You know what I'm saying? So, hey, so okay, cool. He's trying to have a whole interrogation in the middle of somebody talking. I'm trying to listen <laughs> to get this information, see what's going on. To me, that's rude. Yeah. Not just to me, to, to the people speaking. To me, that's rude, man. It just is what it is. But I just want to put that part out there. Now, I also want to read some right quick, and I'll, I'll talk it back over the coffee. All right? Shout out. I'm going to have to get his name. But I made sure to, I don't know if it's the last video. So I don't know if it's 15 or 14. His comment is pinned to the top of the chat on YouTube. Right? Again, this is Post the Blue Podcast. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you for watching. If you're on YouTube, get this information. Get this information. Share this information. Right? We on all streaming services. Look up Post the Blue Podcast on all streaming services on YouTube. Just go down in the uh, the uh, description. It's in there. Right? For everything. Right. If you listen to this on streaming services, hey, Amazing Studios over on YouTube is the channel name. Podcast is Post the Blue Podcast. Right? Episode either 15 or 14, I pinned this comment to the top, but I can't call his his um, his name right now. But it is pinned if you go check. And I'm, I'm mentioning that because I'm about to read something that, that he sent, right? This is information. You know what I'm saying? When people say, man, some people think they know it all. I don't know nothing. <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, in the world of how it works, I don't know nothing. What I am, though, is I'm a right. tech person. Leonard Anderson loves technology. In technology, one of my habits is buying IT equipment. I build computers, take take computers apart. I clean computers. My son can build your computer. He's 14. He can fix your computer. Something wrong with it. He's 14. You know what I'm saying? We, we do this. You know what I'm saying? I got cameras, microphones, whatever the case is. That's what I'm into. Typically, a person like that is into knowledge because you don't have no choice to be if you into, if you into technology and IT. The way I am, because you got to read up on things so you don't mess things up, right? I, I had to learn how to put a computer together before I put a computer together. Had to learn how to diagnose it before I had to diagnose it, right? So I'm a person that loves that loves information. So before typically I come speak to y'all, I be done already dug information. I be done already went down a rabbit hole for everybody before I come to you with what I say is facts. It's stuff that I don't read. That's why I say all oh, this information you can look up every time I get, unless it's my personal information or my personal experience, right? Everything else that I say, so, hey man, y'all need to get this information. It's factual information and you can go get it online, right? I'm just bringing it to your doorstep because a lot of us don't use these devices in our hands for nothing more than watching YouTube videos or, or Instagram reels or Facebook reels for whatever reason. Cool, do what you do. But this is also a computer in your hands as well. You know what I'm saying? Use it use it to fuel your, your brain sometimes, at least sometimes, right? So I'm going to read something <laughs> that, that he posts. <clears throat> it's a statue. Um, <clears throat> it's a statue that he posts. Not pinned it in that comment. Uh, I don't know if it's the strike one or if it's the, the one uh, after. So I don't know if it's episode 15 or 14. But, but shout out to you, right? This is a 84 statue because this is somebody a lot of people say, and then this is in regards to them. I've seen them comment and say, man, this is a government organization, though. You know what I'm saying? So they're not really obligated to pay what the private sector pay at UPS or FedEx or whatever the case is. We different. Right. This is in regards to that. All right. Statute uh, 84 statute public law 91 375, August 12, 1970. 719 public law 91 375, right? An act mm -hmm. ACT August 12, 1970. HR 17070, 
HR 17070, right? I don't know if y'all can see that right quick. I got ring lights and whatnot, and I'm going to read it right quick. But again, it is posted. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can pause that right there if you want to read that. Pause that. You know what I'm saying? And then you can read that, but it's also um, pinned in one of those uh, episodes 14 to 15, right? To improve and modernize the postal service, to reorganize the post uh, office department, and for other purposes, right? Section C, as an employer, the Postal Service shall achieve and maintain compensation for its officers and employees comparable to the rates and type of types of compensation paid in the private sector of the economy of the, of the United States. It shall place particular emphasis upon opportunities for career advancement of all officers and employees and the achievement of worthwhile, satisfying careers in the service of the United States. I'm going to read the first part again. As an employer of the Postal Service, now I read it slow, you know what I'm saying, because I, I typically have the habit of kind of reading a little bit fast, right? But I want y'all to catch it. As an employer, the Postal Service shall achieve and maintain compensation for its officers and employees comparable to the race and types of compensation paid in the private sector of the economy in the United States of America. So when you Shut say... They don't have to or shouldn't have to pay us what the private sector make. They have a law that says different. This goes back August 12th, 1970. Screenshot that. Read that. It's right there. You can look that up. Right. Y'all know how screenshots work. After you screenshot, you know what I'm saying? You can uh, you can copy and paste that joint. If you screenshot Google. it, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Uh, or or put it in the right statute. Google. Statue right at the top, you know what I'm saying? If you don't want to go back and find it in the whatchamacallit. What'd it say? I didn't make that up. You know what I'm saying? That was sent to me. I just like information. You know what I'm saying? How you feel about that coffee? I mean, the whole point of being I think a lot of people don't get this. That's obviously in the federal government. The point of being in any type of position if you just look at it structurally how, how it's done, it's the federal government at the top, state level, city level, town level. So I would more than likely ask my federal employees to be paid more because I wouldn't want them to get influenced by anything that would want to, in, to come inside of the federal uh, way we do business. This is why companies companies pay their CEOs more money than than other people because they don't want them to get get poached. They don't want them to give out information that can harm the company. I just believe if you're a federal employee, the federal the federal government should make sure. And I mean, when I say federal, I mean the post office should make sure that we're we're at least treated so we can wait. We can make more than make a living wage. Right? It's, it, this is not something new. This is something old. I don't believe in a bill in a in a in a business where we're making millions and billions and trillions of dollars that we should have somebody out here having to work a second job. You want to hold them to a high uh, standard, then I believe, then we should hold you to a high standard as well as to pay us what the standard is. We should not be hoping and praying that we can that we can pay somebody less. Do I think that uh, the union president got? <laughs> I don't even call this a deal, bro. I call this a this a prank. Call it, I think somebody punking me with one point three. Even though he he brought that deal to us, the post office still uh, told him to go ask us about it. All right. As much as much as much uh, frustration and anger that we have at Renfro, I think I'm saying it's not uh, it's not correct. We should have that also at the joy. The joy said, "Hey, I don't believe all my people. They should get one point three. I'm getting myself a raise. I'm getting my, all my management a raise, but they deserve one point three. Yeah. Or or why why we don't know who 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 was you debating with? That's a big issue. 
You got to close. You don't even want your members to know what you ask for. Because look, right now, it looks like. Now, I ain't going to say it look like. People going to find somebody to blame in the midst of anything that don't like that affects the masses. They want to know right. who took part of it, right? Right now, technically, Winfro is only 50% of the equation because he was negotiating with somebody. So, Winfro, right. if you don't want it just to catch the charge for the whole deal, why don't you say, hey, man, listen, I was trying to get y'all some more. The dude I'm negotiating with ain't trying to do nothing, though. His name is this. So we can go find him on social media and be in his inbox. You know what I'm saying? Right. We're going we gonna to blow right. his page up while we don't know that. So this is, this, again, this to give you some type of leverage. I'm saying, was it, again, you you gonna take the fall for this. I'm just letting you know. I mean, you're going to take the fall. My knowledge in the research I have been going out and trying to get, but I do believe that before you go ahead and just stone somebody, you should try to make sure you're stoning the right person for the right for the right charge. My problem is that we only went 20 months and we have no idea what you negotiated. No idea. So let, let, so that's just so that's let's go down that rabbit hole. So from everybody I talk to, say that's the worst deal they ever heard of in their life. So let's put that on one side. That's A. B is that we don't even know you might have negotiated good. You might have went in there and asked for 0 0.5, and then you got it up to 1.3. Well, damn, he did a great job. I, I mean, in my mind, if you went in there looking for, they started at 0 0.5, and you got him to 1.3, that's a, when you say that was good, I mean, he did something. When you say he did something, if that was to catch LA? No, nah, I'm, I'm stoning him. Now, he did go no, up, no, but I'm, it's no. almost like. You negotiated on a low end steal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's true. It's almost like saying, negotiating with, with your girl. You know what I'm saying? You know your girl trying to get your card to spend like 500 And she asked you what's on the card. You're going to say, man, I got like 50 on this. Man. You know what I'm saying? I got 50 But I need to, I need like 100 Now, no, if no. I had told her, like I got 300 though, I probably, you know what I'm saying? The negotiating would have been fouled. So, yeah, he probably could have started in like, hey, man. I think I might be able to get no, I'm gonna say, 5 out of him. But you saying maybe he went in with the point five in his mind, which is still a horrible number, but maybe he went in with the point five. Technically, he done negotiated up by 80% because he got the 1.3. Correct. So I, I get what you're saying. No, so, I'm following. I'm following. So that's what I'm saying. It's not that people people believe it's a horrible deal because they don't know what you what y'all was bargaining, right? So if I knew they tried to give us, let's say if they say, oh yeah, all we can give y'all is a point three, right? And you got a whole and you got one point three, we say you did hey, at least we know you was in there working. But if we take out if because me for me, we take out the money part. Even if you got us five point three, look at all the other stuff that we gave up in the contract. But still not getting out Article Three. Because the contract is basically some tissue because they got Article 3 in there. We didn't put any provisions in there that when when they when they violate the contract that and I know people are gonna get on here and say it is a provision in there. They're supposed to pay you by this time. If not, you know what I'm saying? You do a non-compliance, you do a non-compliance. We shouldn't be doing non-compliance. It shouldn't be a no, it shouldn't be, it should be you broke the contract. Let's simplify. Simplify it. You broke the contract. You must pay next payday. Period. If you don't pay next, if you don't pay next payday, that supervisor, that manager, loses their job on the spot. Do you think we'll get we'll start getting paid every day, LA, or no? Yeah, but the management not gonna never settle for that. Correct. And, and, and guess what? Not gonna not gonna do anything to uh to counter it. And that and that's the problem. You can't have, you can't you can't negotiate with a terrorist organization and think that they're gonna all of a sudden they're gonna they're gonna be a you know culturally uh bear. They all of a sudden now I wanna just oh he's so cute. 
you, you're dealing with a monster. So you're going to have to go in there understanding that, look, these, this is what we want. Call me when you're ready to negotiate. And by the way, I will be taking all negotiations until my members by their president. I'm going every time you send me some, I'm gonna send it to my to my to my union presidents around the world, and I'm gonna let them get that to their members at their union meetings, and I'm gonna let you and when they give me their feedback, I'm gonna give you some feedback, and that's how we're gonna work because I'm working for them. Because certain stuff I may want, they don't really give a damn. Certain things that I might want, I mean, certain things I feel like, you know what I'm saying, that they shouldn't get, they want. So I got to go get that. So the problem with me is that is we don't know what you're negotiating. You look like a bad guy because guess what? You went, you know what I'm saying? No no pun intended. You hey, you was at the after dark Diddy parties. That's what negotiation. The Diddy parties. Pause. Because we don't know what happened. It's a bitch that you're in there fighting. We don't know. It has. It, we have no video. We have no visual aid. We have no uh, written word that says that they offer this. You kind of offer that. We just got to take your word for it. We don't believe you. You not like us, obviously. We need more reform. We need more. We need more transparency, transparency between all union members and the union heads and union presidents and union uh, vice president. We need to know what's going on so we can give you better. You can represent us better. Because I believe that that's the reason of the disconnect, because we don't know anything. That's why I went 20 months. I went 20 months because you came out of 1.3 and I would have told you stay in there another 20 months and that's all they're going to give me. Because now... How was how was they have paperwork that says management has been withholding pay, stealing money, right? I yes. say withholding because you have the ability to pay it, but you currently choosing not to or prolonging it. Facts. How was that goes back two years? How was that not a part of negotiation? He don't respect us. He who? He on management side or he is in Winfro? He, he don't. It's a secret. No, nobody's supposed to know this. He don't respect his members. Man, listen. Don't you can't. Me, nobody, I told you. Okay. Ne negotiations typically start. And has to start on some type of an even playing field, right? Level. We come to the right. table with a clean slate. At any time that one side owes the other side in any fashion, that's going to be a bad negotiation. And it always sets the table <laughs> for a bad negotiation. Looking military, Correct. looking in any form of anything. Look in, look in law enforcement. That's where you're going to get your most negotiation from. Any negotiating that started with a negative, right, you got hostages, typically not going to end in a great way no matter what because there's a negative involved. And I feel like I'm owed something. So now I got to try to get something from you along with what you got now just to be even. But you ain't going to like that no matter what I do unless you get away yeah. with Whatever you're trying to get away with. You get what I'm saying? The man want pizza. Yep. I give you pizza. Don't change the fact that I feel some type of way that you got hostages. I'm trying to get the hostages. You're trying to hold on to the hostages and keep the money you got and get away from it. That's your job. That's what you, you're playing with at the table. I'm trying to get everything that you got from you. What can I give you to get all this away that I'm willing to give up? It's really nothing. Right? But we got to play this game. Right? right. You came to the table with one side on you money. We got to clear that first to get to a clean slate before I feel comfortable negotiating anything. Because how are we talking about money when you owe me? Yes. You owe me money. We can't negotiate, let alone negotiate low rates. And you robbed me already. 
You can't negotiate to get my own stuff back. What are we doing, man? <laughs> That's a bad deal, man. That's like a dude robbing your, taking your drawers off your feet, then you negotiating with them, get them back at two hundred, and you pay two fifty. When in reality, we know how that would go. I'm gonna give him the two hundred, get my shoes back, then I'm gonna have to put the hands on them, and now me and him just got a regular beef going forward. Because I feel like he robbed me, and now he feel like I robbed him. But now we on bad terms, no matter what, because we came to the table with a negative. Can't be at a negative. You got to get that negative fixed first. The dude you negotiated with didn't even care to give you the money your people already owed. That's almost like when management comes to the table to negotiate 1260s and say, look, this happened before. Ain't going to say no names. Came to the table to negotiate 1260s. 1260s at 100%. My station has has a, has whatever clause that happened whatever time ago that was signed on management side already that all our 1260s is negotiated at 150. That's set in stone. There's no changing that. We don't have to change it. Right? Cool. The person on management side said they willing to settle all the 1260s but only at 50%. Only at 50%. The ground floor is 100. Our clause is 150. This is how much you respect me and my people and our hard work to get your mail off the floor having long nights. That you want to give me 50% 50 on what you owe me. It's a damn shame. And I'm supposed to respect that. And you trying to negotiate this. To me, a hey, coffee. I know I owe you five hundred, and the clause say technically I should pay you seven fifty. But let's do this here, and we get this settled today. Let me give you two fifty, and we walk away. The ground floor is the five hundred. The extra percent that that you already got built in your your, your situation say seven fifty. You owe me another fifty percent on top of that. They go down. Not even trying to respect the ground floor. Nah, coffee. Let me give you two fifty for all the work that you don't already did. Hey man, let me give you two fifty. But this is the thing. Call it a deal. <laughs> yeah, call it a deal. Not for you though. But it's the thing. They they attempt to do not the reason why they do the attempt, but they feel like the longer y'all wait, the more y'all are settled for anything because you just want whatever money. So they feel like they can, if I hold, if I starve the dog out long enough, I can give him a bone or something with barely meat on it. He going to accept it. He don't got to eat a full steak no more because he going to accept it because he hungry. Y'all keep acting like y'all hungry. Right? Don't settle EEOs for money. Because you, you look like you hungry. We got to fix the problem. And the fixing the problem don't come with settling nothing for somebody that owe you already. You don't settle nothing with somebody that owe you. Stop, stop believing because somebody bring you donuts and orange juice in the morning to your station. They care about you. Stop letting somebody come in with pizza, pizza and tell you you got to. Hey, but if you come back and get some pizza, you got to give up. You got you want to uh, take a lunch. You want to give me pizza? I didn't ask you for it. You giving me donuts, orange juice. Don't mean that, hey, we good now. We good when you pay me, right? You owe me money, so pay me my money. This is a business. The business is I do what I get paid. The, con the contract says if you break the contract, you're supposed to pay me in monetary value, right? Pay me my money. This ain't, this ain't personal. It's only become personal when you know you owe me, and then you try to disrespect me. Like I know I owe you, uh, I owe you three thousand dollars. But how about this? We'll call it a deal if I can pay you a thousand. I give you a thousand right now. Excuse me, sir. Say what, ma'am? How they work? What they do that? Is? <laughs> like if somebody on the street told you they owed you three thousand dollars, would you be okay? That they give you a thousand dollars. 
Because I know I would. Mm-mm. And then don't snap. Stop. Don't no, no, no. Any of that. No. You know what I'm saying? P key, uh, a key piece of information, right, is because of the level of micromanaging the post office has gotten to, especially in our district, your supervisor or manager probably can't okay nothing without their bosses Fact. okay. So they right. probably just follow their instruction. I can't okay this because I'm going to get a write-up and I don't want to get no write-up. You know what I'm saying? For whatever reason. They going through a situation too. Now, that's not all of them. That's not to say every all supervisors are bad or all managers are bad. Type type of Correct. deal. They're not. Just speaking they're in not. general. Out there. Correct. A lot of stuff we're speaking to the general system of how the post office is running. No matter what side it's on, it's the system that's broken. The Correct. system has to get fixed. No matter who fixes, I don't care who fixes it. <laughs> the problem is <laughs> you, you, you 50% of the issue you 50 percent of the issue and i feel like both of y'all not doing what y'all supposed to do to get to get it situated so i got a problem with both it's nothing part it's, it's nothing yes. like it's business for people that 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 look at this as a possible career you should take it personal if this is your career if you got five ten fifteen years in why should you have to go somewhere else to start over let alone if it's cool. not a, another federal job so you're not you're you're not carrying your retirement over if it's not another federal job. So you got to go somewhere and start over because this job want, don't want to pay you? No. If they got things in place to get them situated, then I feel like we need to take advantage of that and get them situated. We shouldn't leave the job. They should leave the job. And if we can push them Boy. out or make or put in paperwork to get them to fix it, then that's what needs to be done. That's just it. It's just in any other thing. If somebody came to your house and you paid them to do work, you're just not going to accept the shabby work, even if they don't want to fix it. You ain't going to say... Man, dude don't want to fix it. So I'm just going to call somebody else. Typically, you're going to call somebody else anyway, but you're also going to call a lawyer because you're going you gonna to pay me something back for the work that you right. did. You're just not getting away with, with shabby work or with, with stealing my money and, and, and you didn't do the work. However you want to cut it. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's not going to happen. So, again, that just goes to... I see things in the comments when people saying, hey, if you don't like the situation, why don't you just switch jobs? Somebody said that in the comments. And I don't know if it was on strike. I think it was on strike, episode 14. That's what somebody said. Uh, that I read that one. If y'all don't like the yeah. job, why don't y'all just why don't y'all just go to, uh, find a different job? Well, those said, are people. Why would I find a different job when I can make the, the first job better? Why would I leave sense? somewhere where it says they're supposed to do better? That I mean, those are the people who irritate me. The people who are willing to be, that's the people I call in those people, you know what I'm saying? They'll look touched. You know what I'm saying? They'll look, you know what I'm saying? You know, they'll set up anything. They're supposed to do right by you. Right? Any job. Any in all jobs supposed to. Correct. So why would you let them not? When they're taking that same money. And put it in their pockets when they're supposed to be getting it to you because they're trying to protect the budget, meaning protect their bonus. That's what they're really telling you. Yeah, I want I want the bonus. I want my raise. I want to steal money from you <laughs> and be messing with your clock rings. And I want to keep the money from paying you grievances. I want it all. Brand new socks and drawers. Nah. But if there's things in place for you to correct that, then you need to take advantage of those things, learn what those things are. Sometimes you don't don't count on somebody else. Right. If it comes to it, learn your own information. See what see what what you can and can't do first. Then if you feel like you can't do something by, by whatever reasons in all aspects of life, then move around. If you feel like you have to cuz you don't have no power to do anything else. In this particular situation, we got a lot of power. Actually, we got the most power. We just move and act like we have no power. So they take advantage of that. Right? So that's that's what we got to we got to fix. That's what we got to definitely got to fix that. Um but uh, otherwise with that man, again, just checking in, man. How y'all doing? If I didn't ask, you know what I'm saying? We we went right into it. How y'all <laughs> doing out there? 
you cool, you good. Hope so. You know what I'm saying? We just started a new week uh, this Saturday. Um, election ends on the 5th. Make sure everybody get their uh, your ballots in, Go your vote. ballots back. Go vote. Um, Go vote. Make sure if you haven't yet, make sure you got there and vote. You know what I'm saying? Look out for your, your customers. Make sure they, they get their ballots. Make sure you go to all the houses to check. Make sure they got ballots. So we need all those in. Also, you got just, for, just for people who don't know this, if, you, if you're doing mail-in ballots and you forgot to, so you can do a contention, a, 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 you can go in and vote. So when you get your, your uh, ballot in the mail, it's basically a three-part thing. You is your ballot that you voted for. Then it's called the privacy envelope. And then it's the envelope that you put it back in to mail it out. If you forget to mail it out in the mail it out in, uh, envelope. In some places, they will count your votes. In some counties, they won't. You can go in and fill out another ballot just to show this is your ballot. Just give y'all information. Hey, my memo. She forgot to do it. She forgot to do it the right way. This is how we find out this information. So I just want to share it with the masses. So you, if you messed up like she did, just make sure you can go to your to your, uh, county clerk. Let them know, like, look, I forgot to put this in here. Your county clerk office or wherever they, where they have you to go will allow you to put in another ballot just so if you got that provision in your county. Just letting you know. Food for thought. Um. I had somebody don't slip my mind once I thought about that. That was more important. Um, Veterans Day is coming up. Veterans Day is coming up. Um, make sure y'all go out there. You know, you see a veteran out there. Um, tell them thank you. It's going to mean the world to them. It's a lot of veterans going through a lot of things. You know, a veteran that's going through some things. Uh, try to get them to the VA. Try to get them to some programs that have helped them. There's a lot of things that, you know, they're going through. And you got to understand this man or this woman was he man or she man. And they was the best of the best. At the top of the top, they part of the one percentile of men and, men and women who could do anything in the world. And now the one thing that they always are counting on is their body or their brain has betrayed them because they've been in battle, they've been in war, they don't solve some things. So just remember when you're looking at one of them, they're just not, they're a symbol of what you are. They're a symbol of hope. They, they put they put their life on the line just so we can have the freedom to make a podcast, for you to have the freedom to walk down the street, your freedom to say you don't give a damn. But they care, they care to make sure that that flag stay flying high. And those men and women are, are great heroes. Those are the uh, heroes. Those are your Spider-Mans and your Superman. So let's make sure on on, uh, on November 11, we make sure we, we uh, say thank you. And hopefully we can start that every day saying thank you to the men and women who serve our, our great country. It's not the, you, you know, saying what makes our country great is that we have the ability to have different opinions about the same, the same topic. But the one topic that we should not, we shouldn't disagree on is we should take care of our men and women when they come back home, no matter what mental, physical, or emotional that they're going to, going through, we should make sure that we try to go through it with them, try to help them. Sometimes it's difficult. I know. But let's go out and say thank you. Let's go out and show show a hand of appreciation. If you if you barbecuing that day and you see a veteran might not be doing too well, hey, how about you throw a hot dog or brock or a hamburger, some ribs on the plate? And say, hey, I thank you and give them a plate. Let them know you praying for them. Let them you know if you can help them in a way, that will be tremendous. That will be greatly appreciated for me, myself, and the Postal Podcast, Postal Blue Podcast, because – it's not a lot of that going around, and we need more of love for those individuals who have put their life on the line. You got anything about that, LA? Ah, uh, man, listen, man. Just go ahead, and cook some stuff, man. Throw stuff on the grill, man. If you get, if you got some people, even if they're strange in your family, but the, but they serve, hey, man, come get this plate, man. Yes, sir. You know come get this plate. You know what I'm saying? At the very least, you know what I'm saying it's some. It's it's it's, it's really. And again, the, the easiest way to do it is your family members should be responsible for their own families. And I said Correct. it because not everybody know who was in the military and who wasn't. You know what I'm saying? I don't know everybody that's outside of my family who was military just to be 
You know, or am I just offering anybody? You know, what I'm listen, you can do this if, if you want to. You just just to rule out some stuff. Throw some stuff on the grill for your household. You know what I'm saying? Always include your household. Throw some extra on there. Make about 10 plates extra. Drive down the street. You see somebody on the corner? Hey, man, here you go. See somebody with a sign? Hey, man, here you go. You know what I'm saying? I got that. Yep. I, I at least get this weight off my chest by rule of, you know what I'm saying? At least probably one or two of them might have been better. It's not, I still have, you know what I'm saying? A good 10 in this in this day and age or whatever the case is and then i got my my cousin who military my brother who military my aunt who was military they at the crib so i know they eating i got them probably got another one or two along with you know what i'm saying just do something you know what i'm saying just so i can again man sometimes you just got to make your scales way in a, in a with a little bit more balance you know what i'm saying um we all carry a lot of weight and there's a lot of things going on just in general in life right now not everybody have a lot so I'm not going to go out there and tell you to do something that you probably can't afford to do. You know what I'm saying? Typically, typically in this day and age, we can at least afford some, some, some food. And if not, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's app game generation. So Uber, Lyft, Uber Eats, whatever the case. I want to name them all because they ain't paid us for no type of advertising. But y'all know who they sure is. Right. You know what I'm saying? Y'all need to give uh, me the expert uh, uh, that you know advertisement. Along with that, you know what I'm saying? We do got some, some product reviews coming out this week. And next week, you know what I'm saying? But anybody got a uh, new products, cameras, lenses, microphones, whatever the case it is, hit us up at amazingstudios at gmail.com. You know what I'm saying? Please do. Um, we got some reviews coming out uh this week and next week that, that I gotta finish up uh for some items. If y'all are looking to get into podcasting, um, photography and digital cinematography or cinematography slash videography. Vide- videography is more like if you podcasting like this. You just in front of the camera and you just talking, doing whatever it is you're doing. Cinematography, if you want to shoot your own little mini series or um, movie or whatever the case is, like that. You know what I'm saying? I, I, we're going to specialize in reviewing products like that. Um, we're going to have a series on that, on product reviews for that, for to get you guys started. You know what I'm saying? We need this entrepreneurship kick. We both be on it. We get our team on it. Everybody around us is, is on it. So that's what it is. Yes, um, Along, oh, no, I have Blue, Go, keep on. along with Postal Blue and other podcasts will be coming back uh, soon, along with us doing our live streams. We're trying to incorporate a lot of this, not only just for information purposes for everybody, but we're trying to also build, a, again, a platform, an entertainment platform uh, for postal workers, right? There's a lot of things that we just carry with, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like a lot of weight that we just go through things and we too big of a force not to be more um what's the word i'm looking for not to be more unified than we are right when you're in the military yes you got in that uniform you can almost go any place in the military and if somebody else in the military see you they gonna shake your hand they're gonna salute you they're gonna give you a plate they're gonna whatever the case we brothers and sisters no matter you was marine what army point? navy whatever the case you're gonna they just respect the and if something happened to somebody in uniform, somebody that's, that's not in the uniform, but they they wore the uniform, going to go protect their brother or their sister. That's just how it is. You know what I'm saying? There's a more uniform Copy. front because it's limited. It's, it's there, there is a lot of us, but it's limited of us that's willing to do what we do. And I feel like the post office is almost on the same front where it seems like we are very divided for some uh, uh, organization that was built on the back of the military the whole uniform code and everything comes from the military. A lot of stuff in our paperwork comes with the uniformity from the military, but we don't move like, like a unified front. So again, what the Discord platform is for, that's what the podcast and stuff is for, to give our fellow um, uniform service people, as postal office that is, and we bring in the, the military front because I'm former military, coffee former military, right? Um, to bring that brotherhood back and share this information to get this information off and protect each other. You know what I'm saying? So that, that's that's what a, a lot of what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? I know we all got our things that we do. That's why we bring it in the gaming. We're just going to be live streaming. You know what I'm saying? Get in there. Hey, hop in there. I might have a brother over here, brother over there. You know what I'm saying? They want to play yeah, Call man. of Duty. Hey, let's go. You you should never be online and, and not have somebody to find a view in the postal service. It's like 500,000 of us, man. So guess what? We like roaches. Hey, we everywhere. Correct. So maybe you just ain't ain't built up that rapport with the people at your station, 
or in your district or whatever the case is. So guess what? We're going to have a Discord. You can go in the Discord at any point in time. They're going to be gaming over there. Hey, man, who on Call of Duty? Man, who on this? Who on that? Hey, man, I'm looking for somebody. Okay, cool. You should be able to find somebody. You know what I'm saying? Because we're going to be out here. Right? So that's what we're building that for. Along with giving, having the Postal Blue to give us this information. You know what I'm saying? We will to take all information. Right? All uh, information. Also, with that to put out, right after this contract, just for everybody, all crafts, y'all contracts going to be coming up. Let us know about if, it. If they attempt to play us, they going to super attempt to play y'all. Right? <laughs> right? This is what the Unifor 5 front come in at. This is why I say it should have been more people at all rallies because it should be all crafts at all rallies. Because once this happened, when the, when the, when the clerks, th things come up and they try to get played and they got a rally, I'm going to go to that rally. When the, when the truck drivers yeah, got to have a rally, I'm going to go to their rally. And when the mail handlers come up, support. I'm going to go to their rally. As, yes, a, as a carrier, I'm going to go to their rally because we all need that support. Right? So we should be showing up for each other. Um, again, 30 minutes, an hour out your day. You know what I'm saying? That's just going to be what it is. Again, this is this is a, a postal podcast. This is for everybody that, that work at the post office. It don't matter. I'm cool with people in HR. I know people in IT department. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you need type of assistance, whatever the case is. Hey, also, those of you who are going through things, things like that, let me make sure. Call EAP. EAP. You know what I'm saying? EAP. Make sure you call EAP. Um, if you're going through something, your family going through something, right? It's getting close to, um, to Veterans Day. Maybe you lost somebody close to you. Who was a veteran? Maybe around this time of year, you go through things. Typically around the holiday, when people who don't lost parents or lost kids go through things, mental things. If you work at the post office, call EAP. It's one of your benefits. It's free. Talk to a counselor, therapist, psychiatrist. I, I don't know. I don't know what their titles are exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean they, they, they do. They, they train and they there. I think they like therapists and counselors American, or whatever it takes. Trouble right. teens, um, alcohol. Uh, any type of drug, whatever you need, you grieving a loss of a loved one. Get, I I know from a therapy point of view, you get um ten free set a uh, ten free uh, appointments, free ten of them. And I'm gonna tell you how I know your boy got an anger problem. So I went, I took all ten of mine. Then I added some more, but that that's is a great outlet to help us. In, you know, saying the short term to have somebody to talk to. So 24 hours a right. day, all day, 24 all night. hours a day. Uh, again, it's one of your benefits. So take advantage. If anything that's under your benefits, meaning as some way, shape, or form, you pay for that. Whether it's whether it's physically, <laughs> whether it's work related, <laughs> whether it's financially, you pay for that. One oh, thing yeah, I learned from the military that they told me, hey man, get everything you can about the military because they're gonna get everything they can up out of you. This is where the information and, and make sure I store information became a thing, right? This is where I learned it. This is where this part of my brain tweaked that. And I didn't understand that until time went past. I'm like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Um, so do the same. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you need physical therapy and your insurance offer physical therapy. If you're part of the post office, I had found that out one day when I was with um when I was at Western, I was under um uh, United Healthcare at the time. United Healthcare told me if it's post office related that I get like 60 sessions of physical therapy at no extra cost, no cost of nothing. Right? I said, cool. I didn't know that. I started telling people that. Like, hey man, right. hey man, if you got, you know, I don't know if it happened with everybody. United Health, man, they said you got 60, <laughs> you got bad back. You know what I'm saying? You carry mail like you got a bad back. You know what I'm saying? Well, you just slow. I don't know. But you need to go talk to somebody, man. You paying for that. You it's oh, your benefit. Get you need it. to go use that, it. man. Um, and we, so EAP, we, make sure y'all do that. EOs, make sure y'all use that if if need be. Make sure you research that, whatever the case is. Um, things of that also, nature. Uh, go ahead, cough. Also, we having a we're gonna have a new segment coming called uh, Customers Corner. Like, if you're a customer, you got some, you want to know something, and we'll try to do two questions, and you can do that at amazingstudio at gmail dot com. Send us two. Your your questions that you might want to know about your package, why your uh, informed delivery say this, why uh, 
why your carrier does this or why your carrier doesn't do this, why you, the manager told you this. Put the questions in there. We can answer them. We'll let you know. Why, did, Why you know what I'm saying, why you shouldn't drive real close to behind 18, a post to 18 wheeler, why the mailman, take, he's driving slow down the street because he's delivering mail. Whatever your question is, let, let us do that, and, you know, we'll try to get him in the show. Um, what was it? I think that was it. Oh, again, yes. share, share with your brothers and sisters, share across, Sharing is across caring. craft, like across and all subscribe. Crafts, across all managements. Um, share with your customers. Host of Blue, we represent them. The carriers represent them more than anybody else. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Information that they need to know to so they'll take the blame off you. You know what I'm saying? They gonna get here as well. <laughs> Right, um, make sure you subscribe. So, with that man, and... this is what we're here for, man. It's just been another week, episode 16. Man, this is just a fly by week, you know what I'm saying? We just want to chop it up about how this week been going, whatever the case. Kind of went over things that we just been hearing throughout the week, how our, our, how our particular week uh went so far. You know what I'm saying our sister's MIA, but we're gonna talk crazy to them. Uh, yeah. Best believe that. Uh, I might be a part of it, so, so y'all can. Y'all can hear me talk crazy yeah, to yeah. him on, on the phone. You know what I'm saying? iPhone got the update. You can record the conversation and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So I might have to do that. iPhone, iPhone snitching, bro. They're snitching, bro. Man, listen, I don't, hey, know, hey, I don't hey. know. No, look, look, though. It's oh, I got one more thing. If management call your phone, hey, hit that <laughs> record button. Record that. Listen, listen, man, it's a button right here. If you didn't see it, <laughs> it's, in <the> top, <laughs> it's in the top left corner, dog. We're gonna be right there yeah. with a little wavy line and the dot, man. Hold on. Blink this out. It's gonna be up in this 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 corner. Yeah, we can't see it. Yeah, up in it's gonna be up in this corner. But I had to call somebody for it to activate. Be up in this corner yeah. right there. The squiggly line with a, with a little white dot. You know what I'm saying? Bink. Hit that. It's gonna say record <laughs> call. You know what I'm saying? They record crazy. that thing. Record you know they that, always uh, tell you to call them. They don't want to text on the scanner. They be like, call the station. All right, I'm gonna call it. I right. I'm recording hey, the hell out of you. So when you answer your phone, because some of y'all tap the earbuds, y'all don't look at the phone. Who tap the phone? You as your supervisor say, hey, you on the recorded line? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you on the recorded line? Giving you a heads up, man. As soon as they say, now that might correct a lot of stuff because they might not say nothing out of the pocket. Yeah, I'm gonna record it. They gonna be like, man, you can't record a government line. Nigga, you call me. I'll call you. you my, this ain't a government the phone. You know what I'm saying? You call phone. me, man. Can you can't dictate nothing line. on my line? You call okay, me. Okay, you don't pay this bill. But send a message you do not Standard pay then. this bill. You going to get blocked. Talk crazy. <laughs> Most of you get uh, blocked. Uh, what but I again, got, what I got. on the 5th, coming up, make sure you, you watch out for your older customers. Violet's going to be coming in. Political mail probably still going to be rampant. Way past the fifth. That's my expectations. Also, what well, typically happens every, um, not necessarily every election, but every presidential election. They don't yeah. typically get us all the stuff before the fifth. So you're going to get it before the fifth. Follow y'all instructions. Typically, I've always been instructed. Follow. We still got to deliver it anyway. Yes. Make sure you let your customers know, hey, man, I still got to deliver because it's political, whatever the case is. But if you don't want it, you're free to do whatever it is that you want to do. With it, right. Yeah, but I got it. It's yours, but I got to deliver it. Oh. You know, I know, I know it's after the election. Also, I want to, I want to say something that I'm pretty sure nobody said to any of any of us, and I mean the whole post office, no matter what position you've been in. This last, I'll say, from September September to now, we've been really working really, really hard with the political mail making sure that we can get it out, making sure that we can move the supply chain so we can get it done. I want to say thank you. I know it's been frustrating. I know it's been you've been working a lot of hours. I think th I think this week I you know I, I'm over seventy. Over seventy. I worked over seventy hours this week, and I know somebody probably worked more than I did this week. And I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, I thank you for being doing what you do. I thank you for continue to you know what I'm saying you know show up, show out. You know what I'm saying helping the American public stay connected. So. I know it might be hard sometimes and people might not say thank you. People might be frustrated with their position and what's going on and their job title. But I want to say for me, thank you for what you do. Thank you for what you continue to do. 
and is, is greatly appreciated. Maybe, you know, I know your customers appreciate you continue to work all night, to work your 10 hours, to work your 12 hours, to show up on your unscheduled day. We appreciate you. We thank you. And we, you know, hopefully one day we can get it to a point where we ain't got to work them long hours. But if we don't, we still thank you for having your dedication to the United States Postal Service. Hey, hey. You know who was built on the backs of? You know what I'm saying? Um, not to uh, tank coffee point, but let's appreciate the people that come to work more than others. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, if we can, hallelujah, amen, whatever you believe in. You know what I'm saying? Um, hallelujah. But, hey, again, we got to fight the fight. Somebody got to fight the fight. You still show up every day to possibly, yeah. possibly be harassed or attempted to be bullied or whatever the case is. You know what I'm saying? Because you got bills to pay. We got bills to pay. However you want to cut it. Um, be safe in doing whatever you're doing. Be knowledgeable in moving how you need to move to correct certain things. Uh, we do appreciate everybody that, that, that's, that's still coming to work and fighting the fight instead of just quitting or running or leaving or whatever the case is because we gonna make this better for everybody All right we we the biggest we the biggest uh group in the excuse me in the postal service is the carriers things gonna go things move off of us right if we get a solid contract the other crafts gonna get a solid contract because they're not gonna be able to give them a not solid contract <laughs> you know what i'm saying because they gonna be like nah man y'all get the carriers this not to say that we got to get more, but y'all, we got to get something, you know what I'm saying, a little bit. You know what I'm saying? We always at least whatever percent behind them, but we got to get whatever. But soon as soon as we settle for something, that's going, the other craft's going to be the same way. Hey, man, we only get the carriers. This will make you think you can get this. You know what I'm saying? Now, now they're going to snowball downhill based on the, the crappy contract that we got. Because we ain't got none. So you see, the carriers got this. You know what I'm saying? So they got the biggest force. So that's, nah, 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 nah. We're gonna correct some things. All right. So correct. it's gonna take some time. It's gonna take some conversating. It's gonna take some sitting down. It's gonna take some some uh informing. It's gonna take some reading. It's gonna take some learning. But we're gonna learn y'all sooner or later. Okay. Yes, sir. We got things coming soon. Things coming soon for information, things of that mm -hmm. nature. The Discord coming soon, maybe in a week or so. We'll we'll start putting the dis the Discord link in the the YouTube description, right? You hit that, go over there, and we're gonna let let that snowball and start letting that ramp up. And we're gonna count on that more than the Twitter community. Because we're able to do more on the Discord versus the Twitter. All right. So mm -hmm. we'll start feeding everybody over to, to the Copy. Discord instead of the, the the Twitter. We can run that more. Um, and again, you Twitter not right now limits your words that you can use limits the amount of words you know what i'm saying you might have a whole situation but they don't let you put in like 20 words you know what i'm saying you're like no i got a whole right thing that just happened to me man i got you know what i'm, saying? I'm trying Paragraph. to get this off and i'm not trying to do this send 10 messages to get it off you know what i'm saying so i had to take that right. into account right because the last person that that messaged me said he had been harassed consistently he was trying to get his stuff off but i seen that the messages was choppy because there's there's a limit right so now i don't want to i don't want y'all to have to pay uh x premium to get your full stuff off you know what i'm saying so um we're gonna move that to the discord and we're gonna build a community over on the discord right the big community on the discord and then of course we're gonna be riding with the youtube you know what i'm saying and we're gonna shout out everybody that we stream with or play with across the postal community across the nation let's get it let's do it let's have fun you know what i'm saying if it, like, yeah, I mean, eventually, I want to get to a point where we start having like kickball tournaments across the nation and shit like you know, well, excuse me, like, like stuff softball, like that. You know what I'm baseball, saying? Yeah, flag football. The, the, the number one yeah. station in this district got to go against the number one station from the 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 neighboring district or stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And give out prizes and things like that. So it got to start somewhere, right? And I might, I don't know if I'm gonna finish in my lifetime. I'm in my 40s right now. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm gonna have to pass it on to somebody. We might have to hey, pass it on. To I want. At some point in time, we want to pass but... this to, to some other carriers who will be fresh and and new and see some some better. We don't want to, like I'm not a person who's gonna sit in the seat forever. 
Uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm all about growing. All, I'm all about, you know, evolving. So, I mean, at some point, you know, y'all probably will get tired of us at some time, maybe the next couple of years. But we want to give it to somebody else. Uh, you want to tell them? I don't know if you saw my message I just sent to you. You texted to me? I, no, no, no. I put it in, uh, in, uh, in the comments. Go look in the comments. But yeah, we want we want we want to have a a whole like brotherhood sisterhood. We want to get to the point where we're literally breaking bread with each other. We want to have oh, we uh, still, we we, can we have. still gonna be doing that shirts, okay. po poster blue shirts, hats, and stuff like that. We're gonna be doing that for giveaways and things that things of that nature to to represent what you are. Right. You know what I'm saying? We also gonna be um, I do the shoulder patches, which are approved. So the patch that, that lets you know what you are, yeah. you're, you're a carrier, you're a clerk, you're a uh, truck driver, which is your MVS union. Uh, it had your union yep. branch, your, your name of your union on the patch or it just be yes. like clerk, mail handler, uh, truck driver. Truck driver is under MVS, motor vehicle. I forget what the S is for, <laughs> but something like that. You know what I'm saying? That And then you got carriers, which is NALC. Things of that nature, you know what I'm saying? We're going to be doing giveaways with, with a whole lot of things like that. Yeah. Um, and then it's, it's I mean, a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff in the works, man. And again, going you into twenty twenty five, you can also buy yard patch as well. You so we want we want we want to get to a point where we are all about each other and not just about ourselves. And that's what's happening right now. This is why we can get taken advantage of because it's just a singular force and it's not a group. It's not a movement. So we need to like. Go on picnics, you know what I'm saying? And when I say go on picnic, I just don't mean show up with yourself, show up with your significant other, with your kids, grandma, auntie, cousin. Everybody got a cousin Pookie out there, or a cousin uh Billy out there who get on your nerve, bring them on to the picnic, man. Maybe right, you can see a lot of brotherhood. It's a lot of things we can do to help get back in a in a better mental space, you know what I'm saying? Versus work, true, home, true, true, true. work, home, work, home, male, 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 harass, home, male, male, harass, home, male, male, bully, EP, home. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it, it, like you get tired. Just to, again, the monotony of things, you know what I'm saying? So, again, we got a lot of stuff coming, especially going into 2025. It ain't things that you're gonna have to wait years for. We're gonna, we gonna put in some, some, because a lot of stuff is easy just to get into. Um, yeah. And then things of that nature. But we, we are working on that and working on a lot of that right now for you guys to have um, and, and, and start building a, a better community around the Postal Service and the employees of the Postal Service. You know what I'm saying? Things of that nature. Um, I want to get to the point where, again, my, my background, schooling background is digital cinematography. I went to school for digital cinematography. I actually want to do a film. Um, I can, Of course, I can't use none of the... I could, but I won't. Cause I don't, I don't trust them like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't put too much dirt on their name to trust the post office. They might try to, <laughs> uh, <laughs> try to claim, <laughs> put in some claims for some type of footage or something. If I use their logo or something. So I want, I want to do like a TV series about a, a postal carrier. You know what I mean? And it's just almost kind of be like the movie Friday, where it's just like over the top stuff just keeps happening every day to this individual, individual at work. You know what I'm saying? Or I make like a kind of like the, the show office. But it'd be like right, the, right, the, right. The, the mail carriers. You know right. what I'm saying? And then you just have not really one main character, but you can have multiple characters. Things like that. Right. I want to get into that. I want I want to do that. It's what Amazing Studios is actually a, a film studio. You know what I'm saying? Feel, that's what Amazing Studios is. So it ain't going to be just off gonna do podcasts. We're going to do truck mini series. Behind the scenes. So, you can, you, you, so we out here, we, we, we work. We work. The, the same way power. 25 hard. Pause. The same way power broke off, and you got power, and you got the other power, and then you got the thing yeah. that's about Tommy, then you got the other series that's about Kanan, and you got the same thing. We could have something going on about carriers and something going on with the truck drivers over there, then a different type of thing with the, you know what I'm saying? We could do it ourselves, you know what I'm saying? Along with me, me paying to get a lot of stuff done, but that's what that's what I got into it for anyway, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> to, to make it happen. I might need some real carriers, yeah. real truck drivers. Hey, man, I need an appearance. I need this. I need that. You know what I'm saying? To put my own people on. Right? So, yes, again, there's a lot of stuff to come, but somebody I'm has definitely to get my Denzel on. I'm definitely get my sure. Denzel on. Somebody got to start it somewhere. You know what I'm saying? So, we just starting the ball rolling. And, hey, I would advise y'all. Y'all should get a podcast. Y'all should get a show. Y'all should 
do whatever it is that, that you want to do to get yours out there. You know what I'm saying? Again, what Coffee said, maybe you send a message, maybe you want to come on, maybe you want a guest appearance. You know what I'm saying? Randomly. That's cool. Right. Um, and we're we going to run like that and we're going to make sure to give back to the community and build a community because we're trying to get everybody, including ourselves, in a better headspace. This allowed, this almost like a therapy sometimes. Get it off your chest, yep. get the weight off your mind. You know what I'm saying? And because we know how it is, you got to do it all over again tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? So with that, we're not going to hold y'all up too much further, but we do it again. Got a lot of things coming. Got a lot of things coming. I know it sounds like a lot, but again, it's just a regular. Because it is. So it's kind of like all over the place, but we were just talking to conversating. You know what I'm saying? This, we don't do scripts. So I ain't nothing scripted. I don't know what he's going to say from time to time or whatever the case is. And we just, it just bounced back and forth just like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, but we did just want to give y'all some information um, and, and stuff like yep. that. So yes. be safe, be cool. So peace. Be aware. Um, keep your head on the swivel out there still. Some people crazy. You know how it is when, when they looking yeah. for their checks. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? When they looking for ballots, <laughs> they mail in ballots. I mailed it in. They said they still ain't got my ballot. I gave it to the mailman four days ago. Hey, man. You get there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> stuff like that. Uh, supervisors, I'll... make sure if you getting stuff after your last truck, your after your last truck leave, y'all got to take that downtown. Take, especially if it's ballots in there. I don't care how long you got to wait. Downtown. Mm-mm. You lock up, Uh-oh. put that tub in your vehicle, take that mail downtown. Don't put a rubber band on it. Take that mail downtown. That got to go downtown. Actually, that's like every day, though, but not just political season, but take that mail downtown. That shit happen all the time. Also, otherwise, you delay uh, mail. Also, to the carriers, make sure it's going to be winter season. It's going to be ice. It's going to be snow. Make sure you're taking care of yourself. Make sure you're reporting all accidents. Make sure you're working safely. That's the key. Everybody will tell you in the post office. The best skill you can have is availability. Be available at all time. So this is the time that you need to, you know what I'm saying, as you see LA telling you, you might need to start eating things that's going to be more healthy for you. It's going to get I'm you a little to, more lean. You're trying to give me some protein, man. So make sure you stay safe. Make sure you're reporting accidents. Make sure if somebody's trying to make sure you work through an accident, make sure you uh, let your safety, yeah, uh, your safety captain know. Let you know, let your union steward know. Um, let management know. They not hit the EEOC on them. Um, but at this point in time, we need to be trying to stay safe at all the time. Is going we we need every carrier, every clerk, every truck driver in the building. So work safe. Not only look out for yourself, look out for somebody else. And like I always say, leave the post office in a better position than you found it in. This is your boy, Black Knight. Peace, love, and I'm out. And I'm out, man. Again, be safe. Appreciate y'all. Everyone is coming to work in every craft, not just carriers again. Yes, sir. So pretty much just ran by carriers, but appreciate everybody that's doing what they got to do. Uh, even outside the post office doing what you got to do, whether it's sanitation. I can name them all. State workers, federal workers. Appreciate everybody that's outside, especially if you got to deal with the weather conditions. Make sure y'all be safe. When the weather conditions get bad, we will be putting out an episode for winter safety. Yes. Make sure if you don't know that you do know and where to go get information from or where to go get uniform from if you don't have nothing or what you can use or buy where you can to do it. Along with that, we're going to be bringing you the information on who has uh, eventually who has like the best deals for your uniform allowance, things like that. Uh, I bet you y'all didn't know that there is um a thing covered for postal workers to get like three thousand dollars three to five thousand dollars to pay for school or pay towards your school right which really just cover like books maybe a class or two or whatever books. case it's like three yeah. five thousand dollars but still three to four thousand dollars for being a postal worker not you know not by the post out. office by the government but it's it classifies when you go in there it says the other government employees is postal workers that's the thing. A lot of people don't know that. Yes, sir. They, they, they can get that three to five. I bet you a lot of y'all didn't know that there's also a, another program that's similar that'll give you like $5,000. It's like a voucher. It'll give you like $5,000 if you buy a new car. I had to tell Reese about that a while ago. But if you buy a new car, not used, they'll give you a voucher. Brand new. Technically, it take like a month or two to get to a voucher in your email, but you'll get it. It's a government program, right? I don't know what it is off the top. Also, I, also, I'm standing in this. So when I watch this back, it'll remind me to go find the information again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
<laughs> then right. on a future episode, y'all have the information again. And I'll be putting the links in the or here, description or or whatever case it is. Or, yeah. Or we'll try to pin it, pin it uh, to the thing. Correct. Man, you know what I'm saying? It's been a great episode. Man, you did a great job, man. You did a great job. Uh, pat yourself on the back. Uh, let's get ready for a hard week. Did a great job. Nobody got to tell me. I love myself. I love you. And you have a great day. A great night. See y'all on the next episode. With that, we out. We out. Peace.